This is the Blackout Podcast. Welcome to the Blackout Podcast, where I, you know, talk to amazing people about everything uh, from their art, their creative process, and everything in between. And today, I have my friend Ruth Marsh, and she does amazing things with bees, and she is super patient because she works with really small things, and she makes amazing films like Cyber Hive. Um, so, do you want to tell me a bit more about yourself? Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have a, a chance finally to sit down and have a chat with you. I feel like we've known each other a little while, but we haven't had a chance to just sit down and chat. So this yeah. is great. Um, yeah, I'm uh, uh, Ruth Marsh. I'm an artist based in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, I work at the moment mostly in um, stop motion animation and drawing and um, immersive installation video work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what was your last one? My last project? Yeah. Oh, um, so the the last um, exhibition that I had was at um, Paved Arts in uh, Saskatoon. And that was kind of um, the sort of the grand... Um, finale presentation um although i'm sure there there will be more hopefully um but of this um, series of work that i've been making for about seven years um where i take uh, well well people mail me um dead bees that they find so i have this whole project that happens through the mail um where folks um find dead bees and then they get a hold of me and then i send them um a bee kit <laughs> in the mail so that's um a, a small box to put the bee in a questionnaire i gather information about every one of the bees um and uh and then uh, a self-addressed stamped envelope and everyone gets a small drawing or a button or some sort of gift for giving their time to this. Mm. And um, and then when I receive the bees, they go through this very um, sort of lengthy and labor-intensive process of taxidermy that's part of the series of work. And, um, and then I repair them with um, small pieces of um, discarded computers or electronics. Wow. And then I bring them back to life as a kind of like you know, uh, Frankenstein type character, um, <laughs> through stop motion animation. So for the last few years, I've been making, um, stop motion films. And then more recently, um, I made, a, a stop motion, um, like 360 degree immersive oh, um, wow. video. So like, like what you might expect to see for, um, a planetarium, uh, dome. So you're going and it's all around you. Yeah. Where, where, where did you, is that the one at Saskatoon? Uh, well, that, that had a video installation element that had a lot of animation but um that that show didn't have a, a dome um, i did a residency through um iota institute this past summer and uh, and we showed the work in the sea dome on the waterfront if you're familiar with that yeah yeah wow what's the process of creating that one uh <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you're like me and you love um sort of and I'm not joking when I say this. I think people think I'm maybe joking when I say this, but I fully mean with my whole heart that if you like dull, repetitive labor, then you're, 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 that's that's a big a big part of it. So um, one of my great loves is obviously this this very intricate, um, labor intensive um, building work. Um, if you've seen my drawings, they're very labor intensive and time consuming. Yeah. Um, so yeah. When, I, when I started to learn this past year about editing, I was in absolute heaven. This is this is great. This takes forever. <laughs> it's kind of hard and I have to learn all of these new things so yeah so um does that answer your question yeah I know yeah. um um what do you edit with what uh software uh after effects I tried some other things but I'm just kind of really enjoying doing everything in after effects so that was um yeah adapted for the dome um in after effects mm. um most of the time when when folks are shooting uh, a 360 degree um, installation or film they're using special cameras and um, and I didn't have access to that and I was more interested in in taking the footage the macro footage that I had and stitching it together to, to build oh okay so yeah. you said I'm not gonna do the thing easy I'm not gonna make this 
difficult thing any easier. I'm actually going to make it more difficult because, you know, you could just get the camera and shoot it, but yeah. you said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, why, why on earth if you enjoy labor as much as I do, you don't make things easier for yourself. Oh so my I God, really that was... happy summer just editing, 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 and stitching and Whew. rendering. Yeah. So... Uh, how, but how will you plan it though? That's a lot of planning to get that. It's a good. I think it's a good exercise for your brain to um, to be, start to think in and like just, just because you're you're creating a square image. Um, that's quite. <clears throat> so you're quite creating a a large high res image, and in your mind you have to kind of translate it to wrap around 180 degree kind of space. Um, but there's there are a couple of programs that I worked with where you can you could just kind of stick the footage in and, and sort of get um, have have a bit of a look about of how it would look like, and then once a week I would go into the dome and and just see it. Mm. Yeah. So um, how much how much time would you create every week you're going there? Uh, well, I would be, um, rendering and editing, um, pretty much like 40 hours a week. And then I would go into the dome a couple of times. So about, I think we were in there, uh, between three and six hours a week, just checking, checking things out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That means I'm lazy. So, <laughs> so when I hear you walk that, I'm trying to think, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing that. But then the passion that you put in comes true when you actually watch it like i remember watching hive and when you tell people oh so it's it's a film about these bees in their colony right mm -hmm. and that that's it but you have to experience it it's you can describe a film but with that one you have to experience it i think that's what i've noticed about your work and it's testament to the hard work you put in there and that's oh, super awesome that. Uh, I feel like uh, this is something that I've been trying more and more to define in my practice. Mm. Um, but it, but for me, um, the labor is a way of expressing care. It's it's like a it, in my mind a, a, a like a loving gesture, a way to put effort into something um, for for the public when you're a, a sort of deeply introverted person. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so so um, I'm I hope that. Um, the level of, of labor and care that goes into making these things, it, it kind of reads in the work in, to, to, in some way. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I mean, it shows. It shows, in, honestly, in each frame. I guess it's actually testament, especially because it's stop motion. So, you know, each frame, each second is lots and lots of pictures taken together. And then, and then you go there, move on leg. Like there was a scene, and the song actually. Let's go yeah. with the with the with uh, Cyber Hive. I think who who you you wrote the name. It's there in the in the credits, but I've forgotten the person that uh, made the music, the score for the film. Oh, uh, Jeremy Costello um, oh, okay. made a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack, and I'm so proud of it, and so proud of, to be working with him. Mm. Um, and and I, and it's um, very sort of synth heavy. I said, imagine that we're making a sort of like miniature um, version of Blade Runner that's starring all bees. And so he's like, okay, okay, I've got it. And he went and made this beautiful soundtrack. Yeah. 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 And, he, he, you know, he played. And you could tell... So you finished the film and you gave it to him. Then he went to make the sound, right? Uh, we, we tried a couple of different things. Okay. So, um, so I was uh, making... Um, this he did the sound also for this um, video installation work. So um, I made um, six uh, three-minute shorts that were that were played as a as a video installation. So mm. um, so he would he would I would um, uh, edit and I started out by editing and, and animating them um, without sound initially. Mm. And um, and then he would make sound um, that sort of made sense with that with that work. But we found it actually worked better 
um, for him to, for me to tell him, look, this is the mood that we're going for. This, this is like generally what's happening in the scene. Mm. And then he would go off and, and make something wonderful and then come back. And then I would use that to edit from. So, it, oh, yeah, so okay. we tried a couple of things and that worked better. And it felt more like a collaboration than, than asking him to just make sound in, in response. It felt like more uh, of a call and response. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was, I was actually, cause with the edit, you could see the music was going kind of in tandem with what was on screen yeah and some of that was accidental um huh. and uh i think maybe because the the way that i animate is i think pretty pretty like um rhythmic and and relatively simple i mean i'm animating things that are very very small and i'm using a macro lens so every small movement um it, it shows up um in a, in a way that maybe translates as as kind of rhythmic mm. um i'm i'm still learning i'm t trying to teach myself these things so i'm still learning and and so things maybe are a little bit um the way that the that the bees move has a like a certain kind of cadence or uh, there's a way that they, yeah, that they kind of move naturally that uh, maybe lends itself to um, when you're watching it to your mind, maybe putting together the sound with um, with the with what's going on on screen. Although um, when I was editing, I was also trying to match things up. But there were a lot of oh, okay. happy accidents that <laughs> I felt grateful for. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and w you studied at NASCAR. What? Mm -hmm. What? How was that experience for you? Well, um, I graduated in 2006, so it was a little while ago. Mm. I took painting, and I majored in painting, and I thought that I would be a painter forever. And <laughs> yeah, and then I painted for six years, and then um, and then um, in 2012, I did the um, Center for Art Tapes Media Arts Scholarship Program, and and learned how to do. Um, well, I made a, a B taxidermy instructional video, and it was it was so much fun, and it it made um, digital processes, camera work, everything so much less intimidating than I had thought it would be. Mm. That it started me on this path to to produce things in in digital media, and then I worked um, briefly with Tim Tracy, who um, is a, a local animator. He's uh, freaking good. Yeah. Uh, I made a film and he built this set for me. It, it's amazing. And I love his Instagram too because he has, his team is just great. great. Yeah, he's very um, unique and talented person. Yeah. Yeah. And he just has a great spirit. He's so welcoming. He just wants to work on stuff. Yeah. Cool stuff. Yeah. Cool, weird stuff. Which is <laughs> what I like to do. Yeah. So, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So we, I, I worked with him. Um, he was making a film called Crab, and then oh, oh, you worked on that, on yeah. that film. Yeah, I did. Um, did. That's that's his that's his film and his baby. But I I did some some work on that and and learned how to use um, Dragon Frame. And what was that? It's um it's the piece of software that I use to to animate. Um, it's a like a stop motion software um do you know the the film box trolls mm, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i think they used uh, dragon frame for that so it's very user friendly oh, okay and uh and that's that's what i've been using um and so uh working with tim i learned that oh stop motion yes this is for me this is something that <laughs> i love to do and then um and then i made um a film uh, with my bees a few years ago and uh, and then this past year I, I made this um, six-part installation and the um, immersive film for the dome and then I, I made um, a film uh, just a short film yeah just learning how to how to edit and uh, and do all of these things which I didn't know how to do so uh, there's been quite <laughs> well <laughs> quite a learning curve. yeah I mean I guess with each one you just took it and you, it's not even a gradual change, it's lips and bounds. Because I, I know Saba have, you played at uh, Finn, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. That, that. Hey, we played in yeah, the yeah. same. <laughs> yeah, we were in the same yeah, yeah. Thing, yeah. The thing of short films. <laughs> yeah, 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 we did. I know, I was like, oh no, that film was great. It was great, it was great. And um, why bees, though? This is a yeah. This is a question that I've I've been answering for quite a few um, years, and I feel like 
maybe um, I, I still haven't come up with something that's like that's really satisfying. I just I love bees. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel. Um, I feel connected to them. Um, all of, always, my work has had um, an underlying um, environmental message, and um, bees have have been a great um, way to to open up a conversation that that most folks um, are are open to to listening to and don't shut down. And mm -hmm. and like, even if you don't know anything about what's going on with the world and the environment, um, mm -hmm. you do. Uh, you you probably know about bees and what's going on with them and um and I'm you know as I mentioned a very introverted person and a few years ago I wanted to to make this project that was public interactive mm. um and and you know um if you're if you're me the first thing you think of that makes sense is that oh I'll have people mail me bees <laughs> So, so that's how, yeah, that's how that started. And so I had been um, an encaustic painter for, for years before that. What was that? So it's, um, it's paint that you make yourself out of beeswax. Oh, wow. So I had been making um, my own materials out of um, beeswax and natural pigments and also um, egg tempera. So it's made with egg yolk and, and pigments. Um, and so I'd been making these kind of... Um, environmentally themed icon paintings and so that part of a big part of that um preparing uh the medium is that you have beautiful smelling uh melted bee wax around you all of the time and um yeah so it's just uh, been a symbol and an active thing in my practice for you know for 10 years i would say okay great do you still paint no, not really. Right. Um, I I draw. I love drawing, especially of their large drawings that take a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to work hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's satisfying. Um, what was the last thing you drew? Uh, so I ha I made a series of work um, that showed at the Craig Gallery in Alderney Landing, um, and uh, and that showed uh, in 2016. Yeah, so I still. I've actually been itching to start drawing again, and we'll probably be doing that over the next, you know, few months, getting paper together and starting to to make things. How? What's the biggest drawing, the surface you drew, your biggest uh, artwork? Um, usually, I'm, I'm sort of like a goldfish in my practice in the sense that... Uh, I will make a drawing as large as the largest wall that I have access to. <laughs> so, um, so work in that series is um, about the biggest piece, I would say, is maybe five by ten feet. What, like what did you draw? <laughs> I drew bees. <laughs> of course! <laughs> Very large ones. But I started um, becoming just obsessed with um, with patterning and, and hair. And so they started off as kind of bee drawings and turned into these re very obsessive um, extended doodles that would just take up the, the size of the paper. Um, and then I would also... Um, make um, sort of anatomical drawings, so drawings of um, body parts and organs that are just, would just kind of, yeah, have, have, over the last few years have started to come together as these kind of like cyborg masses of, <laughs> of things. Yeah. Um, so how do you do the five feet brain? Do you, do you ladders and stuff, I'm guessing? Uh, no, um, just uh, just take the the paper and and soak it in water and apply it to the to the wall and then just use watercolor tape um, to attach it and then I very slowly and methodically sit in a chair and work um, across across the surface of it. Although I have developed a sort of like low key carpal tunnel, so I'll need to oh, like man. adjust. So <laughs> so uh, do you do you have a sketch somewhere that you draw off or is it all kind of in your head? I like to lay down washes on the paper, okay. and then and then I like to treat it like a doodle that that goes on forever. So I'll just um, build, um, maybe do some some like preliminary shapes and sketches, um, yeah. but then just kind of let it develop into into its own thing. Wow. Yeah, just kind of build one part from another part. Wow. Yeah. It's like it's it's kind of, it's a very I feel like it's a very kind of stop motion like way of drawing. Yeah. 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 Um I mean, so you draw side to side or up 
down? Do you draw left to right or up down when you're drawing? Mm, I guess, um, yeah, probably left to right. Yeah. Shit. So <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it. So, so do you have one big bee? Was it all little bees? Uh, well, there's, there's a, I think you might have seen a drawing at, at my house, mm. um, where it's, so one very, very, very large bee, and then maybe like a couple of thousand really small ones. Mm. Yeah, it just depends. Um, I have quite a few drawings. How long series. did that one take? A couple hundred hours, I would say. Yeah. How do you spread, spread it? Do you just go hours and then for a day, or...? Uh, so sometimes I like to have a drawing going at any given time. There's something, uh, deeply satisfying about just m making something, um, with your hands in a way that doesn't take a lot of preparation and is just very easy to control. You don't have to set up cameras. You don't have to know software. You can just make a thing. So, um, sometimes I draw, you know, eight hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes I draw just, um, yeah, a, a little bit, um, maybe a couple hours a day and just as I feel like it. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in and what other things are happening. Yeah. And in your studio, you have a camera there all the time. Is it is it that you're always working on a ne another stop motion or uh, that camera just leaves there? Yeah, I have, I was, I'm lucky enough to have a camera that, that I can use um, all the time. And I, I use um, macro and um, and like... Uh, the like very wide angle fisheye lenses, so it's two extremes. I don't, I can't just take a normal, <laughs> normal photo. Um, yeah, um, but it's just it's nice to have something that I'm working on all the time. Although at the moment, I'm I'm just taking time to think and um, and write about things and consider things because I'm making a bit of a shift in in my practice away from bees. So um, so I've just been taking a few months to just think and read yeah where are you moving to uh i'm i'm going i think i'm going to continue to make stop motion work mm. but i'm thinking about i'm thinking about well a vr so i want to make uh. a, a virtual reality film that i can also adapt for um, a planetarium dome um so it'll be two projects but i, I think i'll be able to to shoot um yeah to shoot um, live environments, so I'm I'm going to be building um, sets and um, and then um, creating building VR environments from from these live sets, and then I hope to um, learn some some three D skills so that I'll be able to enhance them. But mostly, I'm interested in making virtual environments that are made um, from uh, real real environments that. Yeah, that I shoot in my studio. So they're kind of going to be, you know, um, I'm thinking about cyborgs. I'm thinking about um, wow. science fiction. I'm making a sort of like fabulated body that doesn't have to look any particular way and will certainly be strange and hopefully beautiful. And, <laughs> How uh, big is it going to be? Very small. I'm, I'm building, well, I haven't started building yet, but... Um, but I, I imagine, um, yeah, that I'll be shooting um, similarly to, to my B films. So I'm making um, quite small sets. So, oh. um, you know, something like at the at the biggest, two feet wide, but probably smaller. Okay. Um, and then I'm just shooting them um, very macro. And then, um, and then I think there'll be a lot of kind of like mirroring and stitching and... Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of work. When, when do you plan to start working on that? Uh, as soon as possible. I'm, I'm just I'm looking for funding at the moment, and I'm just um, putting together a conceptual outline that I can pitch to somebody else. Mm. Um, yeah, basically as soon as possible, but I'm still kind of like... I'm itching to get back to work. I don't do well when I'm not working on Yeah, something. but here's my thing, though, because uh, you do your artwork and all, but you're also um, working with eye level. And I know first time that's a lot of work. So I guess my question is, how do you make it all work? Because you make it look so easy. 
Oh, well, thanks for saying that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, it helps that I love um, eye level, and it, yeah, it's really important to me. So we're, we're talking about um, eye level artist run center. Yes. Um, and uh, at the moment, um, both of us are on the on the board. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am fortunate enough that um, I have um, I, I, I work for myself for the for the greater most part. Um, I have a, a small business where I bake, um, and then I work um, part time in a coffee shop, which is great because if you're um, a sort of like obsessive introverted person with a practice like mine, you don't see um, and probably as many human beings as would be beneficial to like <laughs> you know optimal yeah. Yeah. mental health. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it's nice. So I have kind of a patchwork of, of things that I do, and then oh, I okay. like to volunteer um, with eye level. When I have time, yeah. When so. you have time, I, I love it. It's like a full time work, and you're always doing everything. Every day of the week, there's always something oh, happening. Yes. Something. <laughs> how does she do it? How does she do oh, it? Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for saying that. And uh, yeah, no, I feel like I send out too many emails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, every single one has a purpose. See, that that's why like you are. Hmm, I guess you take the inf- efficiency you've learned from all these years of practice, and you bring it to what you do it. At least with eye level that I see. And if you might say, "Oh, I send out a lot of email." Each one gets to the point. Each one says, okay. "This is what we need to do," and everyone kind of knows. It's like you're super. If you are working in film, you'd be a great producer. Oh, thanks. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Uh, I'm it's it's been good to learn better ways of, of communicating I feel like uh, eye level has been a good lesson in, in in learning how yeah learning how to, to, to get to the point I think when I first started I, I would try way too hard to be um, really kind of like very warm and very pleasing which means that that's like a much higher level of emotional labor and also word count so people <laughs> kind of like well, get to the point okay I know yeah so um, yeah so it's it's been really good to learn okay. skills and in, in communicating with folks yeah no, no, it's amazing. Okay, I'm going to end it with this, though. Okay. Um, the B thing, you have a plan moving forward, and you have, uh, you're have doing things you love, right? I, I find sometimes, personally, I struggle, and I know a couple of people struggle when they, they feel, okay, there's something I love, but I don't think I'm good enough at it. Mm-hmm. Um, what advice would you give to such a person? Um, well, I think... I think it, I almost, well, I mean, okay, I, I'm trying, I'm trying not to say anything glib. I, I, what I, what I want to say, the first thing I want to say is that talent almost doesn't really m- matter. I mean, it's, it's good and important, but when, the, when I look around and I see the people who have like uh, a loving, sustained practice, they just, they work really hard and they love what they do. And, um, and and for me that's been that's been a big thing i i wouldn't i wouldn't say that i'm that there's like nothing I, i'm proud of my practice and i love what i do but i wouldn't necessarily say that i'm the most talented person i know i think i just uh love my work and that feels sustaining mm. yeah does that answer your question it does yeah thank you very much for coming well, thanks in. for asking me to come on <laughs> i appreciate it This is the Blackout Podcast. Thanks for listening.